All right, welcome everyone to the October 2024 CentOS board meeting. For anyone who needs the previous minutes, I will put them in the chat or in the agenda and I'll share the agenda in the chat too. First one is last month. And second link is the agenda for today. All right. Um, Troy, you are first on our agenda to review statistic graphs. Okay. Um, you guys mind me sharing the screen? There we are. No, feel free. You should be able to, if not, I think Moss or Sean can. can give you permissions to. It, it's letting me. I just got to. Okay. Find the, there we are. And there's like five buttons you got to push. There. Um, so these numbers, uh, I'm using, if many of you might remember, oh, what is this? Uh, many of you might remember uh, Matt's graphs that he always does with Fedora, the state of Fedora. These are basically the same scripts pointed at CentOS numbers. Uh, we do not have CentOS Stream 8. Um, sadly, uh, I missed it by like two weeks when they got removed from the, from the thing. So I have no uh, CentOS Stream 8 numbers. Uh, but these are nine. Um, they're really interesting. I had no idea. The, as you see here, we're actually up in the 1 million. Um, these are machines. We don't know how many users we are, so I'll say machines. Um, and one of the interesting thing is the the 25 plus weeks. So this is CentOS Stream 9, remember? Uh, right here, we can see when CentOS Stream 8 went away, people evidently live migrated their machines from eight to nine. And um, we have this upward graph and the, the upward graph continues. Uh, one way, to, one interesting thing is to look at these more broken out so that we can see the actual numbers. So that number is about 400,000 uh, machines that are just running CentOS Stream 9. That's their main machine. Um, I personally like to do that because CentOS Stream 9, I like the update uh, schedule for it. Um, but the inf inf ephemeral, things that are less than a week, those are usually used for testing. People want to test CentOS Stream, but also my, I'm, from my experience, they're actually really testing RHEL. But uh, either way, the ephemerals are also fairly high, getting up to at 1.600 thousands. Now, I do have graphs for 10. There is a way to graph both 10 and 9, but uh, 10 was so low that it didn't even show up. So I didn't even bother showing those. Um, 10, again, we are very high on the ephemeral because people are really just testing it out at this point. But we're slowly getting, oh, this is the other thing. Uh, 10 people are testing Arch, a higher percentage. We don't know how much this percentage is going to go when 10 is actually officially released or not. But right now, the Arch 64 on 10 is fairly high percentage-wise. Numbers-wise, look, that's two to 300. But percentage-wise, it's high. And it's not around long enough that we can have any of these 25-week machines. But we are starting to get some 5 to 24-week people that have been testing and using it for a longer time. Uh, at this point, that's all the, the graphs that I have. I have found another batch of things that uh, I might be able to to uh, 
find the the SIGs out of all these numbers. Um, the SIGs are the numbers are very low. They're you know when you're graphing them against a million, uh, it's not going to show up. It's going to be much like the ten. Uh, but some of them do pop up into the thousands of numbers, uh, thousands of users for the SIGs. Um, the automotive regularly has about, a, I think it was 500, if I remember right. So not huge numbers on the SIGs. Um, and we don't know if that means nobody's using them. It might be like, I'm going to pick Facebook here behind their firewall. They might have a million people using the, the SIGs things, and we would have no idea. Um, but it's fun looking at the numbers and uh, it's fun making the graphs. I'll have, I'll have some more later on, but that's what I have for this month. Yeah. And some of the background on this, especially for you, Steve, who don't have the history of what we've been trying to do is we had come up with a success doc. What would mean success for CentOS and we're missing metrics. So we've been investigating different ways to try to get metrics so we can say, if we got another, in this case, from the numbers Troy just showed, if we got another, say, 500 long-term machines, that would definitely be a success for us. Um, numbers we've also been looking for is um, time to someone getting contact when they put in a bug or something. Those are still pending. We're still working on those. But we want some metrics that we can actually measure against to see if we're making progress. And if we're not making progress, we can work as a board on how to get successful. Like if we know that, you know, the process is that a ticket gets in and it sits there for three months, which it, it's not the case. And we've said that we would like it to be in two months. Is there something that we can do to help make it, you know, shorten the time? Is it a template or something else that we can make it easier on the user and on the person who's getting that ticket? so that we can shorten times. So that's just an example. Um, but again, we're just looking for how we can measure where the community is and how we can increase, you know, the users, the experience and everything else. So that's the history on the success stock. Um, anyone have any questions on that? Do we have a link to give Steve what we put together? We can definitely, um, I'm sure. If I recall, it's highly rough and meaningfully unfinished, but it's at least. Yeah, it's me metricless. It has X, Y, and Z in places because we don't have metrics. Um, let me see if I can find it. Is I appreciate it, uh, the concern. Thank you. There is a HackMD titled Success for Stream. Is that the one? I think so. It's in the board private space, so it, you know, we could share it on our Matrix channel to Steve, I suppose. Well, I know we have shared the doc publicly. Oh, okay. So if it's well, might be. Actually, that may not be it. I, actually, I think things in that space are able to be shared publicly. So let me go to another browser and see. Yeah, it's it's viewable publicly. Okay. Then let's go ahead and put this for the reference in today's. Uh, okay. It is now in the um, agenda. I know we've shared the link, so uh, mm -hmm. so I know it was public because we've actually gone through it in this meeting back in the day. Alrighty. And the kind of goal also is that as we get the website revamp, um, that we have this completed so that when we get the new website launched, that we can hopefully have a, what is success for the project on it. Um, any other questions? All right, Brendan, you're up. Oh, man. Is there anything else after me? This might take a while. 
Me. Um, just Sean's community architect update because I forgot to do the random issues. Okay. So go for it. Um, or do you want Sean to go first? I think both of you may take a little while. Sean, I think you know the the content for this one. Uh, do you want to go first, or should I go okay. ahead? I'll go through it. I have a, a a lot of bullet points, but I think it's actually pretty uh, fast. Um, all of you, I suppose, are waiting um, with bated breath for your ballots to elect the um, the next um, the the replacement. Uh, I am still waiting on bios. We we said that we would give people a chance to write their own bios this time around to put everybody on an equal foot, and I'm I'm waiting on those. So I will I will get those ballots to you. Um, I will put fires under people's feet and get them to you this week. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Um, the I want to remind people that we are doing the CentOS showcase on November fourth. Uh, this will be a half day virtual event. And the CFP is open for that, so please do submit. I really want to would really like to hear from um, you know any SIGs that have done anything interesting since you know the last time they had a chance to present at uh, Connect or or uh, the CentOS Chuck at Slack. So um, and other work around CentOS as well, but definitely want to hear from the SIGs uh, to give people a sense of what happens within the project. Um, Connect. I am. I had to go back and ask for a second round of bids uh, for reasons, in part uh, because the bid we had was uh, very expensive, um, and I am. I am waiting on that round of bids to come back in. Uh, so things are. I really, really wanted to be ahead of the game on um, planning Connect this year, and it seems that we're once again in October um, putting these things together. So. We'll make it work. It'll happen, but I'm I'm waiting on bids, and I I can't do a whole lot of anything else until I actually have a venue secured, including getting sponsors or doing a CFP or whatever else. But uh, the intention is still for the two days for it to be the two days before FOSM for it to be January 30th and 31st somewhere in Brussels. Um, so please, if you're planning your travel already for for um, for FOSM, please plan on on attending that. Um, are those comments I should respond to? Okay. Um, speaking of FOSDEM, um, the distros dev room proposal has been submitted by the, that's not just me, that's the whole the whole team. Um, so that's been submitted. I expect it'll be accepted, but I don't, um, I don't have any insight into the process. I also submitted the, um, the stand proposal for FOSDEM shared with RDO, RDO and OKD like we did last year. Um, I expect that'll probably also be accepted, but you know, I don't know. So those have been submitted. Um, I will be at ATO. Uh, we are not doing a CentOS booth because I only at the last minute uh, got approval to go there and booths are long since taken. Um, but I will wear CentOS shirts and have CentOS swag at the Red Hat booth. So we will have some CentOS representation um, at ATO. And as a reminder, uh, Scale CFP is open. If you want to submit any talks, uh, it closes on November 1st. Um, last year, we did this uh, half-day workshop classroom format. Um, it was pretty cool. It went really well. I've been a little bit delayed on um, deciding whether or not to do that um, because I'm not sure how the budget's going with Connect and if, like, if Connect blows my budget out of the water, then I would probably have to pull back from doing that at scale. Um, so I I, I would like to do it again, but I'm I'm waiting to see how numbers will shape up. However, I did have a, a chat with Justin today um, of Fedora fame, um, and he suggested that maybe we can do a joint, like it would be a Fedora and CentOS classroom. Uh, which I, I think would work well because our content for the workshop portion was Apple um, last year. And Apple is, you know, technically Fedora. So um, I think that could work. Like maybe we do a little Fedora overview talk and a little CentOS overview talk and then an Apple workshop. Um, and we could co-brand it. And that might make, um, that might mean maybe a little bit of the funding comes out of, um, out of Fedora budget and might make it a little bit easier. So I will be pursuing that. Um, and I think that's 
Everything that's on my list. Okay, and I put my hands up being that you mentioned people making travel arrangements for FOSDOM. Just a reminder that Doc Day will be on Monday, February 3rd. So if you are going to join us for Doc Day, you'll most likely want to fly out on November 4th. Good call. All right. Um, who did the, any other business? Cause I'm assuming that's going to be short as well. Nobody wants to take ownership. Okay. It was me, it was me, it was me sorry. Okay. It was just to say, to, to say that the uh, discussion about s 3 x that we had few, few board meeting ago that uh, Fabian went forward and S390 is available for Koji Builder. So people started to build with it. So good. It was a good outcome of the discussion. Great. Yay. Yeah, I know NFB, as you've already noted, has already built using it. So great work from Fabian. Anyone else have anything they want to discuss before we make this the Brendan show? Brendan? The show is yours. I, I prefer the Fabian show. Like, let's, like, every time I'm here, someone's saying, man, Fabian really kicked butt. We love Fabian. Yeah, he's a good guy. All right. Uh, let's see. So I see Amy, I'm right down his infrastructure, but I want to, let's, deep breath here. Let's think really big. Uh, the, the thing that is on my mind is about 20 plus years of Red Hat's legacy and how to make things better today than they were yesterday and so on and so forth. And when when I came here two months ago, I was like, hey, I have this idea. I want us to get the three, like leads of the three distributions together, to talk on a regular basis, share what we're doing in case the other two distributions want to like join in, provide feedback. And uh, in that initial conversation, uh, you all were penalty supportive, like, yeah, that, that sounds good. And I said, I'm going to go to Red, Red Hat and Kernel next and, and talk to people about it. And last month, I hadn't quite gotten over the hump yet of like, okay, I can share with you. Today, I can share with you. So. Uh, that's that's the the core here is that um, inside Red Hat there is a desire to improve communication, distribution to distribution, and we like to go forward and organize something. As as part of that, as part of like explaining the idea internally, I wrote an S bar. It's entirely from my perspective. It's deeply Red Hat centric because you know I'm I'm a company guy. I've been here forever. And so it's uh, like, I don't know how it's gonna read externally, but it is not, it is not softened or with marketing speak. Um, I was wondering what, it, well, actually two parts. First, uh, when, when last we got together, I said, hey, let's, let's write a doc together on how we want this thing to work. And so I don't wanna bias how this thing could work by like starting with anything but a clean slate. But at the same time, I want you to, uh, at least know where I'm coming from so that uh, we don't accidentally talk past one another. So uh, two part question. First part is, do you want to see the thing that was written down that is more or less past muster with some of our leads and stuff? They're like, yeah, I, I understand what you're doing. Uh, and, and then secondarily, uh, if you do, what is your preferred collaboration mechanism? Because like, I'm, I'm using Google Docs right now. And I can share individually with like people, but I don't know if everyone else is using Google Docs or if there's some other thing is is uh, appropriate or used generally. So HackMD is common. Mm -hmm. The problem we sometimes run into with Google Docs is access for non-red hatters. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the thing is like I can share with individual non-red hatters who also happen to have Gmail accounts. And I don't know if that's everybody. Yeah, Pat's awake. He's like, yes, I would like to see that. Pat likes words. Yeah. I, I Pat is good with words. All managed to collaborate on Google Suite document type things in the past. Um, 
it's three it boards up to one iPad. So. I mean, I know you used to be able to, and sometimes I've used my own one to be able to do stuff for Open Infra. Um, but I honestly don't know if you can anymore, unless, as Brendan says, you have a Gmail. So if you're not opposed, go ahead, Pat. Uh, as I don't know how Red Hat has locked stuff down, but the Fermi internal collaboration stuff is heavily locked down and it is very difficult to share things outside of the Fermi garden. And so I don't know if Red Hat has done a similar thing. Yeah, the, the way it's set up, I can share with other Red Hatters, no problem. I can share with individuals with Gmail accounts like on a targeted basis, but beyond that, uh, cannot. So I'm not sure like what the precedent here is. Like I, I'm, I want to meet you where you're at, uh, but. The one problem with HackMD has been revisions, but I do believe there is a way now to comment. Davida? Um, given that you already have this in Google Doc, how about we try to share it and then if there's issues, we can talk about moving it somewhere else because it seems it doesn't seem like a great use of time for you to have to move this to some other system. Yeah. While we haven't even read it yet. So. All right. Uh, every, I'm going to drop a Google Doc link into the Meet chat. If you would all press that, most of you be denied. And then, oh, actually, it's going to give me the option to to share with people who are here. So let's uh, let's see what happens with that. All right. Uh, okay. It told me I needed to share with Alpha CC. So Alpha CC, you're in luck. Uh, That's nice. Yeah, that works for me. I can open. Yep, works for me. All right. So I want to emphasize a few things here. There's a little. Uh, header at the front that again this is this is a red hat centric view and this is my view like i i have written this i've gotten some feedback from others but i don't want you to take this as like this is red hat's official position on everything uh this is my position as a manager of a bunch of community people that i want to serve better and i want to have a better dialogue with the distributions that we work in so this is a starting point it's my perspective and it probably it probably has things that aren't actually accurate in it because no one is perfectly informed about everything. So as you read through it, uh, Brendan, feel free to come. Yeah, go ahead. I just want to stop you because people are requesting access and it might be easier uh, if you give them access so they can oh. follow along with you. Okay. Uh, stand by. I know it takes from your flow, but I think it'll be easier in the oh, long absolutely. run. Um, no, I was expecting to get the access requests as like prompt messages, and I'm not seeing it. Oh, here we go. I got three of them. And even if you click on one, you get the review on the top, and yeah. you should be able to see everyone who's asked you for access. Yep, yep. Okay. Review, editor, editor, editor. All right, Benny, Pat, Lance. I think, okay, share anyway. Did you say Davida? I have requested access on with both of my accounts. Okay. And I can see oh. it, perfect. Thing. Okay, perfect. All righty. Was there, Pat, your last one? Sorry. Apparently, if you click notify, but don't include a comment, uh, it, says never mind all right so everyone who who has requested access should have access now all right so uh getting back into the flow uh this is a thing for commenting on this is a thing for for discussion it is an entry point and it is a very open uh very open perspective here so i am i am trying to extend trust with the with the perspective that i have as a long time red hatter and a medium term rel person uh I really think that uh, what we do in RHEL and Fedora and CentOS is important and valuable. And I think we can only make things better by communicating better. 
particularly Red Hat, communicating better. So what, is, what has taken place in the last few weeks has been a conversation about, well, how do we organize internally for these discussions? Because we've got a lot of people who work on RHEL and more than 100 people that would call themselves the lead of something. Oh, I don't want to have a meeting with all 100 of them at once. Wouldn't be very productive. So how we manage that is, is probably one of the bigger parts of what has taken time to get back to you all. But this is the this is like the backstory for me. This is the thing that I think why this is a good idea and uh, why it's kind of overdue, really. Go ahead, Troy. Um, one thing I'm noticing here is, is saying that Rails decisions are independent of the other ones. Yet Rail, you have CentOS stream listed, mm -hmm. and Rails decisions directly uh, influence CentOS stream. What's in CentOS sure stream proper is in Rail proper. Yeah, uh, just yeah, want to I... point that out. Um, well, we sure act. That's for everything we, else. Yeah, we, we sure act we, like we're independent, and yet at other times we we don't. And that's that's really the point, right? Is that the decisions we make uh, affect one another? No. However, it is um, uh, from a technical perspective, what is in um, what is in CentOS Stream is is inherently tied to RHEL in terms of package sets and features. Mm -hmm. um, uh, however. Um, the the marketing around CentOS Stream is is pretty solidly in in our court uh, community side, and um, so it, it would perhaps be interesting. Um, I'm not sure who that is to talk to people other than the package maintainers. The package maintainers for RHEL are the package maintainers for CentOS Stream. Um, you know who 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 is kind of the counterpart in RHEL, and and how does how does our messaging um, um, synergize? I guess I don't know. Yeah, you know one of the things that has come up in the discussion internally about how we would do something like this is what is the what is the scope? So in my part of the organization, particularly post reorg, which which just took place eight days ago. Uh, my part of the organization is largely concerned with the combined whole and the, the things that go into the combined whole as opposed to like individual technologies. So when I think about this, I think about it as, at least in part as being about the, the infrastructure things like, like what was written in the agenda, like the, the choice of a Git forge that Fedora chooses this year may affect the Git forge that RHEL uses two years from now. And it's it's anyone's guess what that might mean for CentOS or or the SIGs at least. Like these are these are things that I would want to be able to discuss before decisions are made, like as part of decision making. Go ahead. Uh, with a caveat that I just skimmed these and from skimming it, it seems fine to me. I just left you a small comment. Um, but one thing that I think would be valuable in this context is establishing a way for folks that are in the Sandos and Fedora communities to get access to people uh, behind the Red Hat firewall without necessarily having to ask for favors. Because uh, it is not uncommon to have the situation where, like, I file a JIRA, there is radio silence. I go bug Carl or someone on, hey, can you ping this person on Gchat for me, please? Because I don't know how to reach them or I don't even know who I should reach. So uh, I mentioned this before, but I think it would be really useful to have some kind of formalized way that people can get access. And on the other side, that an expectation that maintainers on the rel side should actually give a shit about what's happening on the community side and like mm -hmm. pay attention to issues and PRs that show up on on GitLab for streams sometimes and things like that. Yeah, so uh, two parts here. Uh, first, if you file a JIRA and you set a component that will generate the, the ticket will have an assignee, if you like mouse over the assignee's name, that'll give you their email address. You should be able to just like send them an email directly if, if that's what's needed. So uh, 
that's that's how I think it should work. That's my experience of how it works. And I don't know if that's because like my JIRA account shows me one thing and your JIRA account shows you another. Uh, on the subject of ELN, and I love ELN, I just didn't want this document to turn into a, a description of the whole software pipeline from soup to nuts. <laughs> I get it. That's fair. Amy. Yeah, and I just wanted to add in some of what David is talking about, we talked about in the face-to-face. -face. And Adam was going to work on things to improve that for us um, as time permits. So I think we, or I will ping Adam to see the status of where he is on his takeaways from the face-to-face. -face. Because I think if we get that aspect resolved, that will help what David is talking about. Okay, super. David. And I guess my other question is, what what is your audience for these documents? Like, do you mean to have these eventually posted publicly? Do you mean this just for this group? Oh, that's a that's a good question. So well, it is public now. Yeah. It, it feels kind of public right now, um, but I don't want to like advertise it from the rafters. This is, I'm um, we're we're taking steps here in this direction. But my goal is that things like this are the kind of conversation that we can have in in public generally, not just in a meeting that happens to be recorded and its notes are are made public, but in just in general. Like I think. I think overall, when I look back on the last 20 years of how RHEL has operated, like increasingly we've tried to get our messages right, like our announcements right. And like you, you definitely want to get things right, yeah? But you want to get your announcements right for, for your customers, for your product, et cetera. For your community, the, the journey is the thing that, that we have a responsibility to one another for. And so what I'm really looking to do is establish a, a way we are on a, a journey together uh, in in the software that we're making and that we find mutual benefit in in working on together. So that's that's the core here is um, to to not show up with completed stuff, but for every last thing to be something that we're 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 doing something, and you might want to do it with us, and you know vice versa. Yeah, no, that, that makes sense. I was asking because, like you mentioned, this is very Red Hat centric and it definitely reads like a Red Hat internal document. So if you were planning to, like, say, post this on the mailing list, um, I would caution some like careful editing to soften the language a bit. Oh, oh yeah, definitely. Um, the, the, my goal here is to share it with you, the board, and interested parties uh, if, if needed. But this isn't like a, this isn't a PR piece. This so, is this is like like I said at the beginning. This is raw. This is um, this is my perspective that is not. I don't have censorship uh, imposed on this one, uh, not from self or otherwise. So you're seeing you're seeing the things that that I see. Mean that I scroll down to the now what? Um, are you thinking about the external Fedora Rail CentOS leadership interlock being? I mean, you you, you mentioned Google Meet, um, Matrix, and periodic planning alignment. Are you thinking of face-to-face uh, -face with people, or what are you thinking there? Well. I mean, that's the main part for discussion. And uh, recognizing that Fedora isn't here, if they're in the middle of a Fedora 1 release, I'm talking to you all right now. We'll, we'll talk to Fedora leads after 41's out. Uh, I'm, I checked, and that was definitely people's preference. So uh, what I would like to see is, is not necessarily what is the right thing, but I picture something happening as often as weekly, like like in the doc, like, public meeting in Google Meet weekly, maybe uh, a public forum in Matrix for ad hoc conversations, and maybe like a quarterly planning thing where we do something more than just, you know, sharing what's going on in our space. 
but you know that's that's like my idea from from just prior things that have worked for me it's not necessarily like a set of good ideas like that's that's the thing we're going to talk about the the reason why this section even exists is because i in talking to people they're like okay i'm philosophically aligned but what does it actually mean I'm like okay well here are here's an instance of what we might do if we were to put this into practice and so these are these are ideas for understanding the implications of implications of an idea, not like a well thought out, this is what we need to do next. All right, I'll let Davida go, but I'll comment afterwards. Um, we can buy shit on the specifics. I don't think this is particularly important to do now. Um, my hunch is that a weekly face-to-face, -face, given the groups involved, is going to be challenging to schedule because of time zones and because everybody is already in a lot of meetings. So it might be easier to have uh, some kind of weekly async thing on matrix and then have a face-to-face -face with like a longer cadence, like a bi-weekly or a monthly or whatever we deem useful. Um, that might make this a bit easier to schedule because otherwise we can we can definitely try like put up a, a when is good or whatever, but I suspect the overlap would be the null set. Because um, I know this meeting is already pretty hard to schedule in a slot that works for everyone and it's only once a month. <laughs> Yeah, so I was going to say I love the idea of public. Um, Y'all hear that from me a lot. So I love the idea of the matrix room that anyone can come in and join and see the conversations going on. Um, I do agree with Davida that's a little hard to get everyone you're going to need to get um, weekly. So that may turn into a monthly, I think might be realistic um, just from talking to scheduling people for the PTG last week, they're more willing to stay late once every six months than weekly. So once a month, somebody's more willing to stay late um, than they are on a weekly basis. And for the planning alignment or, you know, if we were to do a face-to-face -face with enough notice, we could probably schedule things into a day at flock a day at connect or at least a session, you know, where everyone who was involved went into a room. Um, so some thoughts there, but of course needs way, you know, look, we're planning CentOS connect this far out just for rooms and other things. So things to think about. Um, Pat. So as I like the look of this, I have some sort of bigger process concerns. Uh, for example, if the board comes to a consensus on we need to do a thing, uh, that generally results to uh, either Steve, Red Hat needs an official statement, go get that, or Sean, do the work. And so I'm I'm happy to sit there and sync up with people, but a lot of the folks doing the actual like work tend to not be in this meeting. Mm. So let me let me talk to that a little bit and let me tell you a little bit of background and some of the things we we discussed in this so one of the things that we don't want this particular thing to get in the way of is existing processes that are working like if if you have a, a mechanism between the the centos board and red hat that's working for you we don't want this to subvert that it the, the goal is never to get in the way of of existing things it's about establishing three-way alignment and uh, creating opportunities for participation before decisions are made. So my guess is, I don't know this, but my guess is that there are very few things that the CentOS board has put before it and decided in a flash or in a moment, right? It's it's more like something comes up, you're like, okay, we're gonna go do some follow-ups on this. And, and then maybe there's a couple checkpoints and then a decision is made and then execution of that decision follows. Is that approximately right? Amy, Pat? It sounds about right. Oh, okay, so if that is the case, how would this plug into that is, is like a totally legit question. And the, my thought is, well, if that is the case, then what I would hope for is that when we got together in this interlock, that's just a fancy word. I don't know what to actually call it, so I'm just using that. Uh, when we got together, we would say, hey, the board is currently working on this thing. Uh, we're not looking for opinions on this, but we wanted to let you know because it might affect you. 
or alternately, the board is looking at this thing and you know your opinion might actually help us make a decision or, or be inclusive. That's the core of this is, hey, we're in the middle of decision making. We're decision makers uh, and we have we represent others. So uh, the one of the examples I used just today was, hey, if if I came in and said, hey, I think everybody should for every package should have CI that's mandatory across all distributions. What do you think? I would want the people who represent those distributions to say, no, we would lose all of our community participants if you did that. Please don't do that. Uh, so it is, it's really about representing what's going on and, and having additional avenues of information both to and fro. And, and that's why I think you need to do it more frequently than than other things and not necessarily exactly aligned to events because usually when we have events we are we are targeting completion at an event like because like if if you have us if you're giving a talk are your slides done one month in advance or one day in advance or or even that like it's usually at the end we we target toward the end of something and this is targeting toward the, the middle of the thing. And I can also see the SIG Council, that's still in progress of being formed and governanced up, um, participating in this and even someone representing this group attending the SIG Council stuff. So I see a lot of that as a possible cross collaboration. Pat, that I think would help with your question. Yeah. Um, so I think this is two different groups that will have some alignment. But we have to form both groups first. All right. So when we first talked about this, there was like, yeah, this sounds pretty good, Brennan. Like, let's uh let's Go go check in with the Red Hatters, see if, if they want to do it, and uh, get back to us. We'll work on a doc together. Um, now we're in a state of, yeah, we've got members of Red Hat that want to take part in this thing. Uh, so what is what is an actual next step? Like, is there something, do you all need time to, like, read and digest and think about it? Do you want to, oh, like, okay, yes. Do you want to do that before we talk about next steps, or... Do you want to talk about a few next steps as that, that might follow from that before like a month from now? Um, we're sitting at 12 minutes left, and I don't think that gives anyone enough time to fully read it and yeah. digest it. Um, so we can, and I'll leave this up to the group, whether we want to wait and get back to Brendan next month or whether we want to put something or even just email directly to him, you know, like a, do a group email. Um, with async discussions, what does the group feel on that? Async seems reasonable. Um, like, I, I mean, speaking for myself, I don't think there's anything in here that's especially controversial. So I think it'd be fairly straightforward for us to come to agreement on what we want here, and then that Brendan. So uh, I'd rather not wait another month because. Then we get closer and closer to the holidays, and then nothing ever happens. Okay. So, being that a couple of people have already done it, everyone in favor of reading through this and putting something together and getting back to Brendan asynchronously, thumbs up. Anyone who is opposed to the asynchronous situation and wants this to carry over to next month, thumbs down. I would expect to see Brendan <laughs> react to that. <laughs> I am usually a smart ass, so I was at least going to do that one. All right. So, Brendan, the board will read through this, and we will get back to you in the next week or so, I would say, asynchronously. So I think we just need some time to digest it. I don't think anyone is opposed to it. Yeah. But we may have some questions that just glancing at it, we can't get to you in 10 minutes. 
Yeah, not to be too meta, but I think this is an excellent illustration of the challenge of showing up with something completed. Not necessarily. But... Well, it's not really complete. It's... But... but we are good with words, Pat and myself at least. So, um, all right. So does anyone else have any questions for Brendan to continue the conversation? Alrighty, we have already gone through Sean's presentation and the any other business. Does anyone have any any other business that was not in the agenda? Going one, twice. All right, we will give everyone nine minutes of their day back. Thank you all for attending. Thank you for the conversations, and we will get stuff back to you, Brendan. ASAP. All right. And like, if you see anything in there, you're like, that's not reality. Please just add a comment. Like, well, we all got a piece of the puzzle here. I'll put it together with you. Sounds good. Sounds good. Okay. Thanks, all. Thanks, guys. Nice to meet you. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Thanks, all. Bye.